Alrighty guys, Sunday afternoon. Uh, I split these videos because my first one, I got like 11 minutes worth of footage and that's enough for one video. So, uh, you know, sometimes you just make multiple videos in one day, you don't change your shirt and you don't have any shame in it. So um, this video will probably come out midweek, but uh, we have made a bunch of progress in the last video. Um, and so I'm gonna do just a little bit of cleaning up in here. Um, so I'm not walking on a bunch of rust. Uh, but got the fuel tank out and then I am going to drop the engine, uh, or sorry, drop the frame, <laughs> drop the truck off the lift. And I'm gonna work on kind of getting all the wiring off of the engine. So like the coolant system, uh, I haven't really drained that yet. And then get the wiring off, get the wiring harness and any of the accessories that I plan on using and actually get that engine ready to be pulled out of the frame here pretty quick. Um, and then the next thing that uh, I gotta do is I gotta just start pulling the whole wiring harness off like the back half of the truck because this thing's gonna get sandblasted and so pretty much everything needs to come off of the frame. Um, I do have to make a decision at some point in time with like how weak uh, some of this stuff is that we're gonna be fixing, cutting out and fixing. Um, I do have to make a decision at some point on if I'm gonna cut that out and before I have uh, my guy sandblast it or if i'm just gonna like spray paint it yellow so that he doesn't need to sandblast it because of course if i'm paying him i don't i don't need him to sandblast that stuff so um yeah there's this this guy right here with the hole in it that's a fuel tank cross member and then the other one that's not in very good shape is this one right here that i'm pointing at so um that's like the the spare tire carrier cross member so, um, and you know, the cross member in front of it ain't in great shape either. So, uh, in all honesty, nothing's in great shape, but, um, we can save it. We can put metal where metal ain't and we can fix it. You know, um, I'm not sure exactly the scope of how far back we're going to have to be saving. The good thing is the outside of the frame the outer rails is relatively relatively strong from what I, for the metal I have now, of course, the guy could sandblast it. We could have nothing left, right? But um, the outside is good, which is um, kind of important because I didn't plan on back halfing this truck. I could back half it if I needed to. Um, but let's be honest, Alec ain't that great with a tape measure. So, um, probably not a good idea but uh all jokes aside i can back half it if i really have to uh, i just don't i want this truck running in the next month or two and if i back half it i think i'm gonna have the old paralysis and we're not gonna have this done this summer so um it might be uh get it strong enough to take the power for this year and then if i end up keeping the truck um, maybe we will back half it and do a four link on it because I've actually been looking at, uh, doing something like that. I just got to do a little more research on my end and figure out, you know, how I do it. So, um, that's tentatively in the plans. Um, but for now, we're just going to make it strong. We're going to drive it for the summer. We're going to enjoy it. And then next winter, we can friggin' tear it all back down and do it all over again if we want to. So, um, there's not enough work that it's not worth doing it twice. Uh, it's not like we have to completely redo the frame and then we're going to cut it off again and completely redo it. But all the cross members need to be done. And those, those aren't that, um, they're structural, but they're not that crucial to the point where me cutting them out and welding new ones back in is going to ruin this frame. So, um, like I said, we're going to lower the truck down and I'm going to start working on the wiring harness mess that is going to be um my next problem so um i will check in with you guys in a little bit all righty guys there's one two more things i wanted to show you that i got since the last time i saw you and so these plates are made by um a guy on the gmt 800 forum and actually what they are uh if you don't know they go on the frame for people that have uh cab mounts or the cab mount pedestals that are uh, super rusted out just like these. So that's kind of a common problem on the GMT 800s in the rust belt, but you can see that hole is just way too big. So that's something that I got in the mail and uh, that's gonna go in my spare parts 
area for this project. Um, the other thing that I got in the mail is some, uh, I believe these are poly. I'm pretty sure they don't smell like rubber. I just gave them a sniff, but uh, these are poly uh, cab slash body mount bushings because the old ones were toasted. So that's another thing I got in. Uh, it comes with some new hardware and stuff like that. So um, put that on the parts shelf and let's get to freaking work because uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to come here um, yesterday, which was Saturday. So we're making, we're making progress for missing that day. Um, so I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, just taking a quick pause to uh, do a little recap here. Um, as you just saw on the time lapse, making pretty good progress on getting all the wires off the engine so that we can pull the engine out of the frame. Um, the labeling of the wires is the most time consuming part. Just unplugging stuff, if I knew that there was, you know, the engine was right next to it, weren't sending the frame off, didn't have to pull a harness off. I probably wouldn't label most of this stuff, but uh, it's going to be a spider nest when I got to put it back together uh, or a spider's web. So um, I'm labeling all of it. So you can see I'm on the front right now, but all these blue uh, tags on them say, you know, alternator, evap, purge, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, oil pressure sensor, kind of important to know where it goes. So, um, making good progress. I think next I'm going to move the camera and I'm actually going to pull the intake off of the engine. Um, just because the lift plate that I want to use to pull the engine out, um, I need to have the, I need to have the intake off to bolt that lift plate on. So, um, it will be just barely, you can see them back here right there on my workbench, but it will be intake number three laying on the workbench. So I should probably start labeling them because otherwise I'm going to get them confused, but they're all the same intake between the 4853 and 60. Uh, only difference is the injectors, which doesn't necessarily matter because we got 85 pound fast fuel injectors to go inside of the manifold. And then also, um, I don't know if the throttle bodies are a different size or not. So, um, this uh, intake has a bunch of good sensors on it that I know work because they didn't throw any check engine lights. So I will likely use this intake uh, to start off with. I'd like to eventually do a different intake like a Trailblazer SS or a FAST. I think they're the LSXRT, which stands for, the T stands for the truck intake of the LSXR. So um, those are quite spendy, but there's pretty good gains on them. So maybe, you know, down the road, we'll swap over to something like that. But uh, I'm going to get to work pulling that intake off, and I will catch up with you guys once we're done with that. All right, gang, I'm back. I'm calling it for the day. Um, my phone actually, I was recording with it all day long and it gave me the low storage warning and it was at like 9%. Um, so from what you saw last, um, I was in the middle or in the process of taking the intake off. So I do have uh, finishing up or finished up taking the intake off without the camera recording. Um, one thing, I think the devil designed it, but the coolant hose that goes from uh, right here on the front of the cylinder head to the throttle body and then the throttle body back to the radiator. Awful. Worst thing ever. So, uh, of course, that hung me up a little bit. And then uh, I started working on taking apart some of the, or taking off one of the AC lines so that uh, I can eventually take the core support off. So I think the next time I see you or next time we work on this, um, I work on this with you guys, 
Uh, I think I'm gonna unbolt the core support uh, to the best of my ability and try and leave everything together, but pull it off so that I can just bolt it right back on when the truck eventually comes back from sandblasting. So, um, like I said, I'm, you know, really happy with the progress that I made today uh, between fuel tank, transmission, and getting pretty much almost all the wiring harness off of the engine. So um, that's, in my book, pretty good progress. I was here for about uh, five hours or so. Wish I could stay a little longer, but uh, you know the way she goes. It's about dinner time. I'm hungry. Ran out of water a while ago. So um, I got to go ready to check, pay rent for this place, and uh, go skedaddle on home. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, thanks for checking in. Leave a comment if you would like. Uh, give me a subscription if you could. I uh, greatly appreciate it. And uh, I will check and check in with you guys. See you guys next time that we're out here. Go work on some of your stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.